SpongeBob Battle for Bikini Bottom is getting a remake, and the developers have stated that the original game's cut content will be added to the new version. So what was cut from the original? Welcome to the cut content of. Many TCCO fans suggested that we make this episode, since the game is often thought of as being the best SpongeBob game. There's a bunch of cut content and scrapped ideas too. A robot Squidward boss was shown in some concept art, but never seen in game. You likely would have done platforming to reach some buttons which would release boulders from the ceiling and hit his tentacles, disabling them. The Glove World theme park from an episode of the show also has concept art. It would have had a roller coaster ride where you can grab certain items. This level was adapted into the Goo Lagoon Pier level. Patrick was planned to have a dream level where you jump across candy related platforms. This level was only left in the files of the Xbox and GameCube versions of the game, and can be activated using this code for the NTSC version and this code for the PAL version. The lack of a skybox makes it look a little weird. An unused phase in the fight with the robot SpongeBob boss shows him with anchor arms. You'd have to pop the anchor arms to make them deflate while playing as Patrick. You can't damage the boss properly, so the developers probably scrapped this quite early on. Also, Spongebob himself may have been intended to use the anchor arms, as he's got an unused texture with the name Muscle Arms. Speaking of unused textures, this game has loads. Here are some of the most interesting ones. An early version of the icon for the things you can bubble bash exists, called Target, and can be found in a folder called New Folder. Pat underscore bed is a bed for Patrick, but it has no model. Two buttons called Basic underscore button exist, and a red and green buttons saying push. A texture says Spotlight button, and has the early red button saying push on it. Most levels have an orange unused texture saying Temp. It was likely a texture the developers would use when art for an object hadn't been finished yet. Another temporary development texture is a purple texture called Temp underscore platform. A test texture can be found called Tongueboard underscore test underscore sand. The intro cutscene has an early skybox, which is pink. The final one just uses a normal blue sky. Two borders for text boxes are in the files, but don't get used. There's a brown one and a blue one. There are also early UI textures, including three spatulas for the pause menu, but the final game uses 3D models. A Krabby Patty and an anchor with no currently known uses. There are two pineapples for the pause menu that were replaced with jellyfish. The underwear from the pause menu also has an early texture and there's a small blue bubble. We'll talk more about these pause menu textures a little later. The early red button texture from earlier gets used in a model. It's quite basic and was replaced in the final game with the texture of a hand instead of the word push. Early pre-release screenshots show Patrick holding a football, which has its model left in the files. This gameplay element was replaced with the throw fruit, which is a watermelon. Also seen in early gameplay are two tiki's. There's a thunder tiki that is seen in this screenshot and there's an early flying tiki seen in this screenshot. Squidward's models have a clarinet, but he never actually plays it in the game. An early version of the hint sign has a model showing Gary the snail on it, rather than a question mark. Also, a sign in the shape of a mountain saying exit was meant for Sand Mountain, but doesn't get used. In SpongeBob's kitchen, when taking the camera out of bounds, two completely hidden types of shelves can be seen. They were likely misplaced by the developers when they were added, but this mistake went unnoticed. Two fish NPCs have beach versions of their textures that go unused. Mr. Krabs has a pet worm that can be seen in some episodes of the show, and this worm likely was going to be added into the game, as it has a model but with no textures. It does have animations and can be spawned into the game with some modifications. The Sunday seen in an episode of the show was originally going to be a power-up that would have allowed the player to run faster and destroy stone tiki's for 10 seconds. Five differently coloured shiny objects are in the files. They're seen in an early screenshot. They would have been deposited in this cut box, but the final game uses clams for shiny object gates instead. An early toll gate can be found, with a different texture. It says stop on the shell. The guy on the raft has an unused version where he's got no shirt and wears green swimming trunks. The team who developed this game, Heavy Iron Studios, also developed Scooby-Doo Night of 100 Frights. The intro video from that game is in the files for the Xbox version of this game. It's even got the Scooby-Doo theme tune. Heavy Iron Studios also left in another video as well, which is their logo screen from their previous Scooby-Doo game. Two more cut videos exist too. There's one called HI Logo, which is the updated Heavy Iron Studios logo. The other is 3 Logo, which contains three additional company logos. These videos only just fade in and fade out. They were eventually replaced with this intro. 
The cart Sunday power-up has two configuration variables called Sunday Time and Sunday Malt. There's also leftover configuration information from Heavy Iron's Scooby-Doo game. Squidward has an unused walking animation. Mrs. Puff also has a scared looking running animation that doesn't get used. Gary has a walking animation too. Bubble Buddy has a couple of unused idle animations. Larry the Lobster has a basic walking animation where he slowly moves his claws. Mermaid Man was originally going to run away from something while screaming, as he's got a similar animation to Mrs. Puff's unused one. He also has a boring walking animation as well, and so does Barnacle Boy. Plankton has a walking animation that is slightly broken, where he moves around slightly weirdly. Sandy has an animation for getting hit, but she never gets hit in normal gameplay. The mime from outside the Krusty Krab also has one of these animations. Robo SpongeBob has an idle animation, but he never does this in game. A hidden sign can be found when glitching your way inside the lighthouse. It says that springboards can spring you higher than normal if you bubble bounce them. This doesn't happen here. Goo Lagoon has a trampoline that does work in this way though. These are inconsistent as developers were given freedom with their creativity, which allowed each person to make objects behave the way they wanted them to. The early menu graphics mentioned earlier can be made visible by modifying game files to use an unused file. When pausing the game, it will show the early unused pause menu. The final one does overlap with this one, but we can now at least see exactly where the cut icons would have gone. Some characters have cut lines of dialogue. Here are some of the ones we found most interesting. Go SpongeBob, it's your birthday! Bye, I, I, I. Okay, that's creepy. The bigger they are, the harder they... Hit. Hard as a rock. He's only big if you think he is. Wow, I'm huger than normal today. You're just a bag full of jelly. Also, some characters have alternate takes of their lines left over. I always thought the gym was trained. I thought the gym was already trained. Howdy, Mrs. Puff. Howdy, Mrs. Puff. Well, if it isn't Sandy Cheeks. Well, if it isn't Sandy Cheeks. Ow! 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 And here are some unused sounds. <laughs> the Krusty Krab has three rooms you can't normally get to, but are modelled. The kitchen that Spongebob works in is there, with actual objects inside since you can see through the window. The other two are empty and neither get seen. Click here to watch some of our best videos. If you enjoyed this video, share it with someone who might be interested, and subscribe! Thanks for watching!